Hello, my name is Visor, and welcome to game 29 of Let's Play Game Death Tycoon. Last episode, we did a big bet that we barely passed, but I'm still not sure how. But anyway, so for this episode, we're going to be making a new expansion for World of Everboard. Now, this is our first expansion ever, and hopefully we can learn some cool stuff from it. So I am very concerned about World of Everboard because it looks like the maintenance cost just constantly increases. That seems kind of troubling. Hopefully this expansion will breathe new life into the series. Now, for the idea for this expansion, it's going to be based on two ideas again. The first part is from Bob and the Threadbare, and he calls it the Shadows of the Furries. Basically, high-level players can now visit the moon, but they're more interested in feuding with these cat-like furries that join the communities. Maybe they're cat-like, maybe they're rat-like, that debuted in a recent expansion. Well, this expansion, of course. But they gotta explain these new creatures, so let's go with Marcatus Essay's idea. Basically, there's a recently discovered continent that are inhabited by these man-sized chinchillas, who are also stereotypical South American natives. He wants to call it World of Everboard, Dust of the Chinchilla. I think that mechanically explains why are these people feuding. Plus, I think wasting all your time feuding instead of going to the moon sort of fits the whole World of Everboard feel. So let's go with that. So what are we gonna call it? Well, I don't think we can use the whole name because World of Everboard is definitely too long if we're gonna add on a subtitle as well. So we'll just go with Woe, which I think really shows off how World of Everboard works. As for the name of the expansion, hmm. Now I know the idea of using dust was supposed to be like it's mist, but I'm gonna make it dandruff, or the furries, because they probably got a lot of it. So I guess for the combinations, I could leave everything the same as before, it should probably work just like before, but the original World of Everboard wasn't great. And there was a problem, I think, with the PC. If I remember correctly, if we look at the data, yeah, you'll see that the PC is only good for RPGs and only good for everyone. And that probably hurt the score. I think you need four greats to really have something work out really well. If we look at the play system too, though, it is great for everyone and great for RPG. So maybe we'll just cut the PC from it. We won't release for the PC anymore. Why not? They don't really like the system, so we can probably score better and that'll be good for us. Oh, oh that's not good. So it looks like you cannot remove the primary platform, which means we have to do it for Play System 2. It's the only way to make up some of the money, I think. That's probably not great, unfortunately. Hopefully this doesn't doom the expansion from the get-go, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get started. Also, as you can see, Michelle Fuller is still going through training. I'm hoping it ends before development starts, because uh, we probably kind of need her. Anyway, for G3, we're doing a large booth just because it's going to help all our games, our two released games, as well as our expansion. Anyway, so story and quests, super important. Engine, I don't know. Honestly, every time I think about this, I always go back to Final Fantasy. I mean, the graphical engine work they did for Final Fantasy VII impressed a lot of people. And since then, they've continued doing it. But none of their newer games have really been that impressive to me. Really, I still like Final Fantasy VI the most. So is all that engine work really that important? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. As for gameplay, not sure if it's more important than the story and quest, but it definitely should be important, right? Okay. In this case, we're going to put Jennifer on story and quest, since she's good at design. Now, gameplay is also heavy in design, but we don't have really that many people who can do it. We have Marcus, which is all right. And then we have Visor and Arndt as the next two, but they're not ideal, really, because they're pretty balanced and could be used in another area. We'll see what we can do. Anyway, so let's check some features. Story and quest is pretty simple. We don't have too much there. Gameplay is also fine. As for engine work, we need to cut a bit. I don't really need basic physics still. I do need multiplayer. I guess we just need multiplayer and save the clap. That seems like the bare minimum for an MMORPG. Granted, I don't know whether you have to have those features. I don't think they're actually locked in just because it's an MMO. So we'll see. This time around, I'm gonna be a little more strict with the boosts. I'm gonna to try to get a lot more design points than technology points this time to hopefully get a good balance. Maybe it'll make a difference. So I boosted Jennifer and Marcus, but not Erica, because Erica's, you know, tech heavy. Yeah, so the Bard's doing fine. That's good. And as you can see from our points, we're definitely getting a lot more design points now. 
All right, it's G3 again. We should be over a million. So we'll probably be the number one booth again. Just kind of boring, honestly. It just keeps going up. But all our games will benefit from the hype, so whatever, let's take it. A little concerned that all these guys are getting tired, though. Hmm, what? The Bard had bugs? No, it didn't. When I released, it had a zero bug count. Pretty sure, anyway. But, whatever. Um, what are we going to do about this? Well, if we're going to make a patch, we can just have Michelle develop a patch, I guess. Yeah, I'd rather her develop the game, but we need somebody to develop a patch, so might as well be her. So, dialogue should be super important. Level design is probably important. Not artificial intelligence. I don't know what that symbol means. It's either bad to put points into it or it's neutral. Not really sure which way it goes. In terms of features, dialogue is pretty straightforward. We only have those two features. But how are we going to do the mix? Because yeah, we have Visor and Arnt, but that might not be ideal. Instead, it might make more sense to put Arnt on dialogue and put Michelle Fuller on level design. Because I know level design is fairly balanced, but it was definitely skewed one way or the other. Level design was either more tech or more design. I'm hoping it was more tech, because, well, it would be convenient for me, for one thing. Anyway, we're going to drop artificial intelligence a little bit, and just do AI companions. I think that's really all we need in the AI field. As for everything else, we'll cut, um, level editor? No, that's not enough. We'll cut easter eggs, and that'll have to do. Yeah, that looks good. Let's do it. Also, we need to do some marketing, but wait a minute. Michelle Fuller is still developing that patch, and I just put her in charge of something. That's dumb, but we'll just have to hope for the best, I guess. Anyway, let's do some marketing. Large campaign. Pretty good. We actually have so many design points, I can probably boost Erica, and it'll still be okay. Probably won't overdo it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Some news on the Inbox 360. No big deal, really. Actually, from what I read, the Xbox division and Microsoft are still in the red because they sold the first two consoles at a huge loss. All right, another media inquiry. Um, hype this shit, hope for the best. Because we're pretty much just going for broke. It could probably work, right? Maybe. I am a bit concerned that the hype from G3 pretty much is already used up. The game's not making a profit anymore again, which is a problem. All right, here's a bit of news on the patch. Looks like they're pretty happy, and I'm guessing if we didn't patch the game quick enough, we'd get screwed over, like lose a large number of fans or get sued or something. And I'm still really concerned about these guys' efficiency dropping so much because they really weren't tired before we started, so I'm not sure how I could have done this better. Anyway, world design, super important. Graphics, not as important, but still more important than sound. Pretty sure we learned that from our first game. Though I wouldn't really say that sounds straight up unimportant for a fantasy RPG. It still should be something, right? But can I do that many features? I'm not sure. Because as you know, the individual slider is actually not that important. What's important is the time allocation bar in the bottom. So by putting more time into sound to get these features, I'm actually cutting into time I could be spending on graphics and world design. So this time we'll cut back on sound, just do stereo sound, and spend more time doing things that are more important. Like 3D graphics. I think actually that 3D means uh, 3D like, you know, the 3D movie glasses type of deal. That's going to be a weird experience for an MMORPG. Anyway, as for balancing this stuff out, well, this is where the problem comes in. Really, I've been using Jonathan Richardson's kind of wrong. I keep using him in stage three, which is not tech heavy. But the problem is he has so many design points, I can't really put him anywhere else. I know he doesn't have as many as Visor or Arnt, but at this point, I've usually already used him for something else. A possible solution would be to get Michelle Fuller more rounded out so she can handle more stuff in stage three. Then we could leave Jonathan for more tech heavy stuff. Probably. But that's something for the future. So for now, I guess this combination will have to do. So let's hope for the best. Anyway, we'll hit Jonathan's boost. And Jennifer's as well. Because right now our balance is actually very design heavy, which is good. Exactly what I wanted. Plus, I think we hit the right feature, so should be okay. Probably. All right, so the bar is off the market. Actually, let me double check something real quick. Um, yeah, I guess we really gained that many fans for that type of game. I don't know, I think this is an aberration. I don't think we should have gained that many fans, but we did, somehow. 
So I guess I'll just have to accept it. Whoa is losing us a lot of money though, so we gotta get this expansion out quickly. So as we've seen, I guess we have to get rid of all the bugs before we release a game. Though I swear, I don't think the Bard had any bugs. I don't know what the deal is. I guess one possibility is when I was bug fixing, some of these guys were overworked and maybe they introduced a new bug. So in that case, the smart thing to do now might be to send these guys on vacation. Yeah, I'll probably get a message about how we gotta devote the whole team to developing the game, but whatever, I don't want any more bugs screwing us over. So we'll just send everybody on vacation and then finish the game. It's balanced, so we'll just release that, send on vacation. At least we got a new record in design. That's probably a good thing, right? Salary increases, do research. Now, since we leveled up 3D graphics, that means we might consider making a new game engine next episode. Especially since I have 400 research points anyway. We'll see eventually. Let's worry about our current game first, though. So the Inbox 360 is out. And here's our game reviews. Not bad. Eh. Eh. Well, on the plus side, they did say we achieved a great balance between technology and design, which was one of my concerns. Unfortunately, these scores are still not great. Now, part of the problem, of course, is our initial combination. So yeah, PC was good with RPGs and good with everyone, but at the very base, it couldn't be great across the board, so it couldn't be amazing, which is unfortunate. It might have actually been smarter to not do an expansion, but we'll see. Hopefully this won't hurt us too much. Anyway, let's go see the game report and those final sales numbers. Oh boy, we're in trouble, man. First up, game report. No big deal, gameplay is important. Topic and audience match is great. Fine, all good. The problem is the sales numbers. Now this being an MMO, I don't get a new sales sheet or anything. Instead, it just continues on the old game. The problem is, you see, it's only really profitable for about seven weeks. Maybe up to nine if you're willing to include that one off week. And after that, it's crap, and it's pretty much gonna keep on losing us money. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna continue doing this. As you can see, I ran it for a bit longer, and we have $1.5 million left in cash. Obviously, when I play the game, I'm not gonna run it as long. We might do it for about nine weeks and then cut it off. But we're gonna be pretty low on cash, so uh, yeah, we're in trouble. We're going to need to do something extra special and simple next episode. Ultimately, though, I'm not really sure why I would want to do an expansion for an MMORPG. As long as the maintenance cost constantly increases, I think you're screwed no matter what. It pretty much has to start off as a great MMORPG or you're in trouble. At least that's my opinion so far. We'll worry about that in the future. But for now, that's it for this episode. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.